Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and this is a breakdown for the first trailer for Jokey Folia Deux. Folia Deux means a delusion or mental illness shared by two people in close association, but if you're translating that, do it in the horrible French accent I used to say the phrase. This CinemaCon trailer gives us our real first look at Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn in this standalone universe take on the Joker character, of course, a sequel from the award-winning 2019 film from director Todd Phillips. This looks like it's gonna be a pretty controversial film from the mere fact that it is a kind of musical. But you know what? Musicals are great, folks. We wouldn't have the cinema industry without the popularity of movie musicals in the 50s and 60s. And I'm kind of sad to see that they've gone out of style. But Joker 2 is bringing it back. All right, let's break down what we see in this trailer. It opens with a prison guard opening Arthur Fleck's cell and asking, hey, Fleck, you got a joke for us today? Notice his cell number. Looks like it's E230, and he has his own private cell. Just a quick recap of the 2019 film. Arthur Fleck was a mentally unstable clown, an aspiring stand-up comedian who lives with his mother in 1981 Gotham City. And because of, you know, federal due regulation of the safety net. He loses his health care coverage. He has a specific condition where he is unable to stop his laughing fits. He idolizes the late night comedian Murray Franklin, played by Robert De Niro, which was Todd Phillips referencing the Martin Scorsese movie The King of Comedy, as well as the Martin Scorsese movie Taxi Driver. Arthur is attacked by three drunk investment bankers, and he violently lashes out in defense, and he shoots them. But one of the guys, he just straight up kills out of rage. Thomas Wayne, father to Bruce Wayne, is running for mayor, and he condemns these attacks, but it ends up stirring this controversial movement in favor of someone fighting back against the rich. And Clown masks start appearing all over the city and trolling Thomas at his events. Arthur ends up believing from a letter from his mother, Penny, that Thomas Wayne could be his biological father, and he ends up creeping on young Bruce Wayne on the family estate, and Alfred Pennyworth gets in his face. Arthur ends up confronting Thomas at a theater, and Thomas denies it, but Arthur submits a tape to Murray Franklin, who airs it on a show in order to mock him, calling him a joker, and Arthur learns from Arkham Records that Penny was actually Thomas's housekeeper and was mentally unstable herself and had a violent boyfriend who abused Arthur, sticking his face against a Radiator. Arthur ends up smothering his mother. We learn that Arthur's relationship with Sophie Zazie Beats throughout the movie was all a figment of his imagination. Arthur ends up getting invited to Murray's show so that Murray can kind of apologize to him. But Arthur ends up spiraling. He murders his former co-worker who used to make fun of him and torture him, Randall, but spares his buddy Gary. He flees the detectives after dancing down some steps to a Gary Glitter classic track. So Joker Fever has taken over the city. He goes on Murray's show and demands to be introduced as the Joker. And he admits on TV to killing the men and defends his actions to Murray. Murray. And then he shoots Murray in front of the cameras. He ends up fleeing into the city and then standing above his praising supporters. And it's implied that one of these rioters are the ones who killed the Waynes, leaving Bruce alone in the alley. But the film ends with Arthur suddenly in a mental ward laughing about a joke that he refuses to tell the doctor about. And he walks away with bloody footprints and he flees the orderlies. Director Todd Phillips said that he intentionally left it ambiguous as to whether Arthur becomes the Joker of the traditional Batman stories or it inspires a separate character. The Walking Phoenix believes that Arthur is actually the Joker from a Batman universe. Many also debated whether all these events might have taken place inside of Arthur's mind, like the movie Fight Club. And when we talked about this movie five years ago, we pointed at clues like, you know, time on clocks in the final scene matching another major scene where Arthur was just randomly shown banging his head against a wall in one of the few other scenes where things were this bright and this white. So the music in this trailer is What the World Needs Now, which was originally composed by Burt Bacharach and popularized by Jackie DeShannon back in 1965. Now, this version of What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love is the voice of Tom Jones and Sammy Davis Jr. And that's why it kind of sounds like this guy's about to break into bomb bomb. What's new, pussycat? We see guards escorting a rain-soaked Arthur down the cell block. Presumably this is after that shot of him maniacally laughing in the rain in the exercise yard. He passes and locks eyes with Harley Quinn, Lady Gaga, singing in a music class. We must ask ourselves, is she real? Because this Joker just has a very delicate relationship with reality. And who knows? Everything we see her in in this movie might just be something that's inside of his mind. I choose to believe that she is real, or at least as real as anything is in this movie. But I ask, what did Harley do to get into this facility? Because originally Harley Quinn's backstory is as an employee at Arkham Hospital, Dr. Harley Quinzel, who falls in love with the Joker and allows him to kind of drive her crazy and love it or hate it. There's always been, you know, something a bit problematic about this relationship, which the Margot Robbie take on the character actually embraced and addressed in Birds of Prey in a way that I really, really liked. But again, I don't think Lady Gaga's version of Harley Quinn is meant to replace what Margot Robbie did. It's clearly just doing its own very, very weird thing. We hear a voiceover saying, we use music to make us whole, to balance the fractures in ourselves. But Todd Phillips at CinemaCon on Tuesday evening said that he didn't want to call this movie a musical. What he said was, quote, I like to say it's a movie where music is an essential element. To me, that doesn't veer too far from the first film. One of the first ways I describe the character is that he has music in him. He has a lot of grace to him. It's different, but it will make sense when you see it. So make of that what you will. In this shot, Arthur gazes up and the umbrellas now suddenly change color. Blue 
yellow, orange, red, which seem like the colors of Murray Franklin's set. Seems like Arthur is just now imagining himself in like Singing in the Rain. By the way, Singing in the Rain, all time best movie musical starring Debbie Reynolds, who was Carrie Fisher's mother. And in my deep dive of Alien, I made the case that Ripley singing You Are My Lucky Star in the final scene to calm herself as she attacked the Xenomorph was kind of a meta reference by Sigourney Weaver, who had auditioned for Princess Leia, lost the part to Carrie Fisher, but still had respect for these women's blazing a trail for her to be able to be cast in the best sci-fi series of all time. Because we have to acknowledge that it would be crazy for Waylon Yutani long haul truckers in the year 2122 to still know a movie musical from the 1950s. Now, this shot is definitely an homage to the 1964 musical film, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. And I feel like we're gonna get references to a lot of different movie musicals in this film. Now, according to an IndieWire article, much of this sequel is reportedly taking place within Arkham Asylum. It's gonna be a pretty confined movie, though apparently the budget is somewhere between 150 and $200 million. We see some shots of Harley Quinn on the outside walking up these same steps that Arthur would walk up every day before he ended up getting incarcerated. So maybe we're going to replay the events of the first film and see that she has had her eye on him since before he was infamous. Then we get this beautiful musical shot that looks like it's from the 2002 movie Chicago, where a spotlight is on Murray while he's in his Joker makeup and right on the piano, pling, high notes, an additional light, flickers on to Arthur's front side, lighting up his microphone. Back in Arkham while watching a movie, Harley leans over to Arthur and whispers, let's get out of here. And I imagine it's kind of like the scene in Shawshank Redemption and they're just watching some classic movie for like recreation time. Could be like any musical, right? Fred Astaire, Ginger Roger classic, maybe something Cole Porter. Then Arthur and Harley meet each other on a stage with multicolored windows in the building flats behind them and then a massive moon and they begin to waltz. We later see this set at a minute 41 seconds and it's the top of the Hotel Arkham where there is vacancy which I think is just a fun reflection on how Arkham Asylum always just has open cell blocks. It's really just a revolving door facility for Gotham's rogues gallery. And right on the part of the song where it goes, what the world needs now, we cut on the same dance move to them now just waltzing in the street. So they will get out of prison and we will see how as we continue through this trailer. Arthur runs down the same street that we saw him running down in the 2019 film. He's chased by two members of the Joker gang. The further one back almost looks exactly like he did when he was in his red suit, but the first runner gets hit by a police car and you have to wonder, is he really running from anyone or is he really just running from projections of himself? Then we see this talk show set that looks like Murray Franklin's set, but the lights now reveal Joker and Harley, which might be within Arthur's fantasy or who knows, maybe in this world, they really did just take over the studio. We see Harley painting the Harlequin lines down her eyebrows and her cheeks. And it kind of feels like the unhinged moment when Arthur in the 2019 film painted his face and then just like pulled his cheeks up into a smile. And I think it's interesting that this trailer ends with this amazing shot of Arthur forcing his face into a smile drawn by Harley Quinn. There's some just incredible symbolism in this. This video is sponsored by Blue Chew. Look, what you do in your bedroom is your business, but if your business could use a little boost, then it's time to call in a consultant. And the best consultant you can get for your bedroom business is Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. That way you can plan ahead or be ready for whenever an opportunity arises. It's super easy to do. Just sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And it's all done online. That means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. If you're skeptical or don't think you need it, try it free for a month and see. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our audience. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code New Rockstars at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code New Rockstars to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring our channel. Then there's a jazzy nightclub where Arthur and Harley look like, you know, they could be in something out of Spider Man 3. But this could be the actual stand up club that Arthur would perform at. A quick shot of Arthur laughing as he's dragged down the hall. And then Harley Quinn in her final form outfit, this red blazer with makeup Harley Quinn diamonds on either side of her eyes. She walks up the steps of the courthouse and check out these signs in the crowd. Free Joker, Arthur Fleck killed something something, Gotham forever Joker, then like a Christian cross, a sign that says resist, and then a Grim Reaper sickle. Then we see Steve Coogan playing some kind of reporter asking, tell us what changed Arthur? Which kind of feels like uh, maybe a Melvin Belli reporter, like in Zodiac, when he's like trying to psychoanalyze the Zodiac over a TV broadcast. Arthur and Harley dance 
dance down the courthouse steps, reenacting Arthur's iconic dance in the 2019 film. But the notice this newspaper, free on all charges. Oh my God. So presumably Arthur will convince the judge or the jury that he killed Murray on live TV, by the way, out of self-defense or that maybe there was some other kind of problem with the case, but he was on TV. We all saw it happen. Is he gonna argue that this was some kind of like mass delusion and that it's gonna work? Maybe arguing that everyone in Gotham is so crazy that they view a plain in sight murder as possibly justified. Also, I love this detail. On the right in this crowd, it looks like there's a guy dressed up as Prince, which is perfect because of course, Prince recorded music for the 1989 Tim Burton Batman film. And that was part of the big reason it was such a huge hit during the summer of Batmania. And then this shot where Arthur is cuffed in the back seat of this truck as he's brought into what seems like his trial, there is a Joker mask guy behind him banging on the back window. And that kind of looks like one of the masks from the opening heist sequence in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight. That's the one who goes, where did you learn how to count? Then we see another stage set with a curvy white path leading to a wedding chapel. We see bridesmaids like the singers in Little Shop of Horrors. The ring bearer though on the right is Gary, Arthur's fellow coworker whom he killed Randall in front of in the 2019 movie. And poor Gary, he was so traumatized. Two shots of Arthur and Harley kissing and then Arthur beats up someone with a stool in a nightclub. Notice how he never lets go of the microphone. So I wonder if that microphone is kind of like the way he gets in and out of the fantasy. And if he lets go of the microphone, the fantasy drops. Then we see rioters and looters throwing a trash bin through the window of a TV repair shop where Arthur is on the screens. Harley and Arthur run hand in hand away from a fire that I assume they started in this place. Then this explosion rocks a press conference. And you know, a lot of these reporters would not have made it. There's like TV news cameras. What the hell happened here? Gotham is going to be set ablaze. I'm really worried. Harley points a gun at Joker while he's on stage. And I assume this is like part of their act. But notice this shot at 151. Harley smears blood on her lips. And this is a courtroom, folks. You can see lawyers and their paperwork on the desk. This might be during Arthur's trial. I really think that of all the movie musicals that this movie might be based on, they're going to be pulling from the 2002 film Chicago, based on the original Bob Fosse musical back from the 70s. This is one of the all time best movie musicals. It might be like the last time a movie musical has won Best Picture, and deservedly so. It's an important film that everyone should see that takes a character who clearly shot someone in cold blood and murder, but was able to just corrupt the justice system enough to get off. It basically is able to transpose a trial in a courtroom into like a three ring circus, a vaudevillian variety show as this musical satirizes corruption within the justice system and the way the media converges with it. I really think this movie is kind of like a perfect way to do that now that, you know, we are seeing trials of people who claim they could kill someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and get away with it. But I love how this trailer ends with Harley drawing the lipstick and a smiley face that lines up with Arthur's cheek and Joaquin leans back and forces the smile that fits perfectly into it. I have to wonder how many times did they have to do this take to get it to line up perfectly like this? Like Arthur is bending himself to fit into Harley's image of happiness rather than the other way around. Just think about how complex it would be to line this up perfectly. One actor drawing just a smiley face free hand on a pane and another one just knowing where the camera is lined up and the focal range and then just nailing it just with with a facial expression alone. Like that's how precise Joaquin Phoenix is when it comes to control of his own face. Actually, in order to pull off the shot, I bet what they did is they put a monitor within Joaquin Phoenix's eyeline behind Lady Gaga, showing the exact camera position so that wherever Lady Gaga drew the smile, he could just lean back into it and kind of keep his eyes focused where it should be and see where he was. But that's still really, really hard to do. And just putting this shot in the trailer shows off the kind of technical precision that Todd Phillips and his cinematographer Lauren Cher are going for in this movie. These guys are not f***ing around. And it's interesting because other than Joker, these guys are not really known for prestige cinema, but they are really upping their game here. And yes, the framing of the shot does remind me of Robert Pattinson's Batman interrogating the Riddler in the 2022 Batman film. You know the scene from the infamous new rock star's thumbnail. Does he know? For this movie, I feel like our thumbnail is going to be like, is she real? James Gunn, who is now overseeing all the DC movies, confirmed that while some upcoming DCU films will have Elseworlds branding, Joker 2 will not to be part of that Elseworlds branding and should really be seen as a completely standalone film. Now, there was some reporting from Variety that we may see 15 songs on the track list and that insiders described it as like a jukebox musical and that there was going to be 15 reinterpretations of very well-known songs. And one of them is said to be That's Entertainment from the 1953 musical The Bandwagon that was famously associated with Judy Garland. So obviously, this is kind of a love story between Joker and Harley Quinn as they kind of la-la land their way into la-la land. But I want to know from you, are we going to see young Bruce Wayne part of this story? Is he coming back? Comment down below with your reactions to this trailer. 
Are you excited for this film? I am. I love movie musicals, even if they're jukebox ones. Let's not forget that what made the release of The Dark Knight such a huge weekend for all of movies everywhere was that the other movie in the movie theaters was Mamma Mia. That was the original Barbenheimer, folks. Comment down below with your thoughts and follow New Rockstars on all social platforms. Subscribe to New Rockstars, The Break Room, and The Deep Dive. Follow me at EA Voss. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.